Oh, hello. Welcome back to the Adam Sandler podcast. Yes, we're back. Um, after a, uh, well, not, not really a break. It was just some technical difficulties last week. And, uh, yes, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to discuss that in a second. But I just want to introduce the episode. So this, in this episode, we are watching, um, Another one of Adam Sanders' good movies. I don't know why I did. Anyway, we're, we 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 watch we we have watched and we're going to discuss "Rain Over Me." And as always, I have my friend and trusty co-host uh, Christopher. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. And uh, yeah, regarding last week's episode, just 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 to get that out of the way. When I was checking everything. Uh, we had sound, we had picture, everything was working. Um, there were some slight problems with um, streaming it on YouTube since we always dual stream. So I was trying to fix that as the show was like starting. And something happened and no sound was recorded. I could see all the levels moving around on the screen. Like, oh, okay, I can see my voice, I can see Christopher's voice, I can see the video clip's voice. But when I went back to watch it, no sound, none at all. And I was even, I, I was, I was a little nervous about it because about 40 minutes in, I got, I got a comment from someone watching who said like, oh, lol, idiot, you're, you're streaming it out without sound. And I was like, ah, he's probably just trolling. Um, people do that on, on, on Twitch. I've, I've, uh, I've discovered. So I know I know there's sound, but I didn't want to like stop the show and and check it and ha have weird echoes in, uh, in the stream. So we just went on and we had a, a, a great episode, one of the better ones I think. Um, talking about click and and I pronounce you Chuck and Larry. But when I went to just double check since that guy said that we didn't have any sound. Yeah, there was no fucking sound. So that episode is lost to the void of the internet. Um, and, um, we have no intention of re-recording it at this point, because to do that, I would have to watch the movies again, and I'm pretty sure you would want to do that as well. Problem is, we don't want to rewatch those movies. <laughs> They're fucking terrible. So, um, if, if we feel like it, when, when this show was about to wrap up, um, depending on how long we continue making the Adam Sandler podcast, we'll revisit those two movies. But until then, there's going to be a gap in the in the filmography here. Unfortunately. But anyway, that's 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 life, man. What can we do? What can we do? So, let's talk about this week's movie instead. This week we only have one movie. And uh, we have sound. I have double checked. I'm actually gonna triple check right now. Uh, we have sound. I yes, checked. we have sound. <laughs> Marvelous. This week we're talking about, like I said, "Rain Over Me." And uh, had you seen it before, Christopher? Oh yes, yeah, several times. Oh okay. This has been one of mine. Like almost watch it once a year or every other year for since it came out. I think. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'd seen it once um, back when it was fairly new still. It was one of those early movies that I <clears throat> completely legally downloaded um, <laughs> and, and watched. And I remember back then thinking, yeah, this is a pretty good movie. Uh, but what was your what was your uh, reaction when you f saw it the first time? Let's start with that. I, I don't exactly remember because I've seen it so many times. So the first time has kind of been... Um, washed away with all the other times but i since it's uh like one of my go-to movies for uh emotional sadness uh, <laughs> uh yeah I, I i i loved it i thought it was great and i've been thinking that for years uh it's i think it's a great show it's a great movie it's not a big movie it doesn't mean that it's not like how do you say it? It's a very small story about two small people. Yeah. But it's told great. Uh, yeah, I agree. And like I said, I'd, I'd seen maybe I'd seen once before. 
Um, and it was kind of like uh, with Click that we were both kind mm. of apprehensive about re revisiting. Yeah, because it's it's been it's been like two or three years, I think two since I saw it last, mm. and. Now when we went through Adam Sandler's movies, I've been more and more apprehensive about it. Like, is it is it really that good that I remember? Yeah, yeah. I was I was uh, a little. I, I I had the same thoughts going into it, um, but I gotta say, uh, rewatching it now for the first time in yeah over ten years, it was really good. It was yeah. it was it was as good as I remembered it. It still had. It has a few problems, but overall, it is a a very good movie. Um, yeah, yeah. It's 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 not flawless at all. No, it's not. Uh, I I would say like in this show, <laughs> Pound Shark Love is better. That's oh a, yes. I would say that's a, that's like a flawless movie. I, we had flaws that we brought up in that episode, but yeah. I mean that's that's a flawless movie. This is a. Great movie with flaws. Oh yes, I'd say. yes. Like honestly, and, and, and if, kind of big flaws. Yeah, if if uh, if Punch Drunk Love is uh, like the gold standard, a ten out of ten, so to say, mm. in this series, um, I would say this is like a solid, solid eight. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, just quickly, quickly ask before we watch the trailer a little bit, which one is? I don't know. Maybe that's stupid, but which one is better, mm. this or Spanglish? Mm. Oh. Yeah, no, that, that's a, that's a tough I say one. that's a hard question, <laughs> but I, I, I think I gotta say this one. Okay, all right. I'd say because um, I think and th and that's that's on me. I'd say, mm. uh, because I'm I'm not an American. I don't really know the the culture shocks that mm. that movie is really dependent on. Yeah, I don't think I can't really relate in the same way that I can do in this one. That's true. Because uh, this is a more universal story. It's not so geographically hooked. No, yeah, and and, and I, I, I think so. I think most people maybe can't relate to the 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 way he lost someone he loved. But you know, no. we, we've all at least you know when you get a little older, you you will lose family members. So you know, yeah, you can, you can relate and, and, to that. And even if you don't have that, in this one, you can you can relate to Don's character oh sure yeah yeah yeah. Uh, the person who's grown up and, and really don't want to and yeah well we'll get into that later yeah yeah let's let's watch a little bit of the uh trailer just so people yes. can if they haven't seen it uh hopefully you know you shouldn't watch this then because we're gonna spoil stuff but anyway <laughs> um let's watch the trailer and uh three two one play Hey, Charlie! Charlie! I ran into Charlie Feynman today. Really? How is he? Hey, Charlie. It's Alan, man. We know each other? Are you kidding me? Who's Charlie Feynman, Daddy? He was my college roommate. I haven't talked to him in a long time. We were college roommates? Yeah, you slept naked most nights. And you were a sleepwalker. It was the worst two years of my life. He lost his whole family in a plane crash. He's lost now. Plane crash? Charlie Feynman for Dr. Johnson. I think they changed yeah, a lot from the trailer. Too. Oh, we're friends. We were college roommates. And? I used to sleep in the nude. I don't play guitar, Charlie. Johnson, you're barely a dentist. You pull people's teeth all day. It don't matter. You stay out all night? It's not OK. I was stuck in Charlie world. I couldn't leave. Come on now, stab his wing. Guys have guy hobbies, right? They play poker, they golf. What's going on, Charlie? Let's hang out. Right now? Yeah, wake up. Come on. Let's have, can you go out? Is he allowed out? Don't do that. Don't ask my wife permission for me to go out. All right, you're right. Can you go out? Charlie, Charlie, Foster! <laughs> A lot of girls here, Charlie. What? You're single now. After what happened to your family and everything. Oh, whoa, oh, hey, I don't have a family, Johnson. No, 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 I know you don't. Who sent you here? He likes you, Ellen. You know why? Because you know nothing about his family. So he figures you won't ask any questions. I have these things that I don't like to think about. I can't do this. I gotta put these back on. Only love. 
got to the place. That's gonna have to be it. The music. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, that that's the, that's the plot. Mm. Um, where was it? Oh, there. There we go. Um, yeah. Don Cheadle plays a uh, a a dentist who um, who feels kind of yeah he, he he's he's kind of uh, he's kind of an Adam Sandler character a little bit in this movie <laughs> yeah he, but yeah he, you're right he plays it with so I didn't much think more, about it that way but he, he plays it with so much more grace than Adam Sandler yeah. does for the most part in other movies yeah. um, but he he is kind of I mean Adam Sandler is kind of an Adam Sandler character as well but. He has his reasons in this movie, because you know his his family died. Um, yeah, I, I just like I, I mentioned when we were watching the trailer, it's not it's not a plane crash. It was nine eleven. They were on one of the planes. Yeah, but that's something I noticed throughout the movie. Uh, yeah. This time around, I I haven't thought about it before. Um, because now I was watching it critically, not for just entertainment. So yeah, um, they. They are very sparingly mentioning that. Yeah, I think it's only one scene they actually mention 9/11, mm. and then there's a lot of scenes where they mention people from around the world did it, and it was a plane crash, and mm. they never. I don't think once in the movie they actually mention it by name. Yeah. So I I have a feeling there was some um, apprehension on the in the production side about actually. Using it in the movie. Oh yeah, that that wouldn't that wouldn't surprise me. I mean, uh, no. it's it's still, what is it? It's, it's well, it's not. It's nineteen years ago, and people are still like, eh, maybe not nine yeah. eleven jokes, or you know, maybe not put that in movies or whatever. Yeah. So I I, I it wouldn't surprise me if they actually filmed. Well, they did obviously, and yeah. <laughs> that they filmed two two different. Uh, shots of that scene where he says 9-11 in one scene and plane crash in another because they hadn't really decided if they're going to go all the way with it or not. So Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, then why they used the, the wrong shot in trailer, that's that's another thing. I don't know. That's, that's probably because they didn't they didn't want to have like an outrage mob like, oh, this mm. movie is disrespectful before the movie even came out, probably. Yeah. Um, it was happening even back then. Yeah. And just quickly, when did that Weird, nine eleven movie with uh, with um, Charlie Sheen. Uh, no, okay. uh, the Twilight guy. Robert Pattinson. Yeah, you know, with the worst ending in in movie history. What? I don't know. You you know. You know this. Gabe, who's on this show, used to be on this show. Yes. It was his favorite thing to show this movie, to show the ending people. Robert... For, forget me for um. Oh, oh, uh, uh, remember me something? Yeah, remember me, yeah. It's, it's the girl from Lost, uh, the blonde yes. lady from Lost, who gets, like, yeah. letters is... from her dead husband. Because that's a movie you actually, like, disrespecting 9-11 uh, in a big way. They're using it for feels? Yeah, oh, you no. remember, right? I, or... I haven't seen it. Oh, oh! You haven't seen the ending. Oh, I'm I'm gonna spoil the ending. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, cause I, cause it, cause it's just a normal movie. There's nothing special about this movie. Okay. In the entire movie, there's just this guy going for this girl, and then, I mean, his parents are, or his father is rich and doesn't approve of it, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then there's this at the end of the movie, he goes to his father and, like, confronts him and like, I don't care about your money. I I want to be with this girl. Bloody blood, blah, blah, blah. It's this big big thing and then the movie ends when he, he goes to the window and looks out and his father is standing behind him and telling him like I accept you for the man or something like that and then we zoom out and he's standing in the World Trade Center and it is 9-11 and you see the plane going to the building and then the credits roll oh no and it's like the really? worst ending yeah it's the oh worst my ending God, ever yeah. made Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, well, now I kind of so want to see that. That's a tangent, but you gotta see that ending. You gotta see it. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> well, this movie is a lot more respectful. Like you, like you mentioned. Yes. Yeah. They they mentioned it once, but it kind of yeah. like, hangs over the movie after that. It's like, ooh, okay, mm -hmm. okay. Um. But yeah. Uh. So uh, Don Cheadle plays something Johnson, a dentist who's kind of stuck in a rut, 
And then he meets up with uh, Charlie Feynman, uh, his old college roommate, um, who uh, he has become kind of a kind of aloof, a, a recluse, um, and they start hanging out. And and slowly but surely, you know, his his story why he is like he is unravels. And it's, yeah, because of s- spoilers. The trailer kind of like spoils yeah. all of it. But yeah, it's it's yeah, whatever. But no, they they. They are really upfront with it in the beginning of the movie. That's not a, like a twist. Oh no, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like the first scenes. So. Yeah, when he mentions that he met him. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then it's really, it's really just a movie about them to hanging out and uh, more, more so Adam Sandler's character opening up, but, yeah. but in 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 a way, um, Don Cheadle's character as well opening up about things in his life. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, like we like we said before the trailer, it's it's a really good movie. I this might be one of those episodes we 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 say this a lot of times. Like, there's not much to say about it, and I feel this might be one as well. But we'll see in about an hour. Yeah. We'll see <laughs> if yeah. we got anything to say about it, because it's just it's just really good. There's, yeah. There's no scenes except for the one where he actually talks about it, but I didn't want to show that scene because that should be reserved if people want to watch the movie. Yeah. That's that. Who that scene? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So One thing I, I gotta mention, like quite early. Uh, I I don't think this. You said it was, but I don't agree that this is an Adam Sandler role. He's not playing an Adam Sandler role. No, it's, I'd say it's cause not... this is. I I would I would say like again. We always bring up those two movies because that's the only two movies he made this far that is actually good. Yeah. Spanglish and drunk. Punch Drunk Love. Yeah. And we, we've seen, said this so many times, but Punch Drunk Love is the best version of an Adam Sandler character. Yes. Yeah. And in Spanglish, he actually plays a character, a mm. different character. Yeah. I say this one, he plays a different character. You don't really get the Adam Sandler vibe. Yeah, he, he's, he's explosive as an Adam Sandler character is, but in this one, he actually plays a character and he actually acts. Oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. Uh, I mean, and not the... just he, he makes a heartfelt speech and things like that, but he he doesn't do the Adam Sandler mannerisms and he doesn't he doesn't move like Adam Sandler characters, he doesn't talk like Adam Sandler characters. He's another character. Oh yeah, no I'd yeah, say. it is definitely different. Um uh, but there there are like like yeah, like you mentioned, he 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 becomes very violent, but there's there is a reason for all of it, so I'm, it, mm. it's not it's not something bad here. It's it's um, it's one of those where he he works as an as the way he acts, the way he usually acts in movies, it works mm. for this role. Yeah. Um, um, and it isn't like yeah, he's not a, a, a like a, a man baby that has to grow up, but um, it is it is a little bit of that because after his family died, he is kind of um, he's kind of stuck. He doesn't want to move on from that. And yeah, he's, th- there's similarities he, to other Adam Sandler characters, but I'm not saying it yeah. as, a, as, a, as, a, um, as a negative thing. Yeah, because the way I interpret the movie, at least, uh, is that he 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 regressed, uh, like, sort of mentally mm. to a time before he met his family. Yeah. So when he was in college and he, he played the drums and he, he plays video games and he... Does collect listen to music yeah yeah and and he, he regressed to a time before that but he does it not involuntary more voluntarily because he still remembers what happens and he yeah. still that's a big thing in the movie that he he keeps remodeling the kitchen because uh they were doing that before the wife died yeah, it was the last and, thing they like uh, argued about because she wanted to remodel yeah. the kitchen, and he was like, "Ah, whatever." And then she yeah. died. Yeah. And and now he tries to remodel the kitchen and tries to find what she wanted because mm. he never got it, he never understood it or, or listened to it. Yeah. And so there are those things that he acknowledged that it has happened uh, in a way, but he still regressed to a a time before that, so he can stop thinking about it yeah from time to time so he's he's stuck in between those these two places and because he's so involved in these two things he can't move on with his life and can't go 
further. Yeah, yeah, he, um, yeah. He doesn't want to move. That, that's that's why he he. If it's like he has, um, uh, he he's he's regressed like, per- yeah, like you said, purposefully re- regressed to to like trying to forget that he ever had a family because he sto- he wants yeah. to stop seeing. Like he said, he says towards the end when he talks to his uh, uh, in laws, his parents in in law. Mm. Um, that he sees, he sees his family every day in in other people's faces. His wife, his children, he even sees the stupid dog, I think he says. Mm. Um, and he 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 like he desperately wants to stop seeing them. He wants to be rid of the pain, so he, that's why he has regressed back to a time before he even had a family. Like that's why he's yeah. acting like a like a high school or a college student, basically. Yeah. Um, and and whenever whenever anything remotely reminds him of it, you know, that's that's when he explodes. Because it, yeah, it, it tears him apart. Yeah. Um, and then on the other side, there's Dom's character, where he's this, I don't know, this family man guy yeah. who works as a dentist. He doesn't have any friends. The only thing he does is taking care of his family and like doing these weird things that he's wife wants him to do or yeah. they do together like go to photo class and play making puzzles together or whatever yeah and and it's like the opposite side of adam sandler where don sees his sees adam sandler like oh you, you have this you're free you can do whatever you want but yeah. then it's... when he sees how hurt adam sandler is uh i gotta check out what the character names are because it's Char- Charlie, Steve. Charlie Fine, Charlie and Alan, Charlie Alan, and Alan, Alan Jones, yeah. right? So, so Alan sees how Charlie, and then the more he sees how hurt Charlie is, the more Alan appreciates his family, yeah, and that he he actually, yeah, he starts liking these stupid things because, well, he has his family and he loves them still, yeah, because <laughs> he realizes what it could be without them, yeah, yeah, um. And that, that that was the thing that that annoyed me a little bit in the beginning because it felt like um, uh, Jada Pinkett Smith who plays the the wife that mm. they were they were gonna make her this like super shallow uh, one dimensional uh, like nagging wife character which didn't at all fit into the movie so yeah it's like, oh she's like forcing him to yeah lay puzzles and uh, he's this um, almost like he's uh, like uh, like like whipped. Basically, mm. and it, it just it just didn't fit with the with the pretty like grounded and realistic tone of the movie. It, it felt like a like a, a comedy, like an Adam Sandler movie wife. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, we gotta uh. do this, and we gotta do that, and okay, honey, I do. Yeah, so, I think uh, that's it. She she doesn't really she doesn't really grow as a character, but she at least evolves a little bit, and it, she's not this one dimensional horrible character for the rest of the movie. It, yeah. it moves on from there, at least. Yeah, I, I gotta say, that's that's one of the biggest flaws in the movie, is that they really portrays their relationship, uh, Alan and Janine. Janine, yeah. Their, their, their relationship, they portray it kind of weird. We need more time with them. Mm, we need yeah. to know more about this relationship, and, and we need to more see her side of things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because that's one that's a big the big like thing in the ending where he expresses to her that he doesn't open up to her and uh and and that's all she all and th- that's all she wanted to hear that yeah. they could actually talk for real uh but you, you never get the feeling that he didn't open up to her no it's it's not really explored it should it should, no. it should i mean the movie's pretty long as it is but i'm yeah it could yeah. just had like Spend like five, ten minutes on that early in the movie, yeah. so we get it more of a picture of how their life is. Because yeah. like literally ten minutes into the movie, we see Charlie, and the the movie just focuses on Charlie and Alan. Yeah, and and also make him a little more of a bad guy, I'd say. Yeah, give him some more flaws that we can we can see why Janine needs him to open up and needs him to change because he give him some problems. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, that is so the that is definitely the weakest part of the yeah. movie. The, another thing that's it's it really bugged me this time. I don't think I, it bugged me before, but it bugged me this time. It's the the 
the stalker girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, Miss Miss uh, something. Yeah. The divorcee. So, in, in the beginning of the movie, uh, there's this girl who comes to Alan's uh, dental practice. Uh, dental dental practice. Yeah. 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 Uh, and and we realize quite quickly that she's interested in her uh, in him, yeah. and trying to hit on him. And he's very upfront with, "I'm married. I don't want anything." Yeah. Uh, like <laughs> and and more or less kicks her out when she tries to, well, when she's hitting on him. Yeah. And and then she sues the practice for yeah. for him hitting on her. Yeah, sexual assault. Yeah, and that's a big kind of a big thing in the movie. Yeah. Uh, and then she comes in, and Alan is told by his uh, co-owners or whatever. Yeah. Um, that he needs to make this go away. So he brought brings her in, and she, yeah, she explains that she did wrong and it, she's sorry. But she did sue him. I mean, yeah, I'm... it would be one thing if she didn't sue him, and then she came in and said, "I'm sorry." But she did something wrong, and then sued him, and then said, "I'm sorry." That's <laughs> yeah, but I think. I, I... I, th- I think that is what that was supposed to be like an overreaction from her side. She was so, um, her being rejected uh, was not something yeah. she was used to. I mean, from what we learn about her character later, uh, that's only happened to her twice in her life. It's when she found mm. out her husband was was cheating on her, and yeah. when Alan said no, so she probably overreacted because she felt the same kind of rejection. Yeah, yeah, and but then we're supposed to be sympathetic and like her at the end of the movie. Because um, yeah. at the end of the movie, they sort of set it up that she's going to be like sort of a love interest for Charlie's character. Yeah, that was a little weird. because And, and it's They, they keep, it's they keep weird. mentioning throughout the movie that she's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and I, I, I don't know. That character could have easily be, be rewritten to a better character without changing any screen time. Yeah. Um... So, so may, maybe... For example, uh, maybe she went into the practice and hit on someone else on in the practice, not Don's character. And then uh, Don says something to her, like "Go, go away" or something like that. Yeah. And then she sues Don's character, and then she comes in and says, "I'm sorry." That would have been a more. It's just a, it's a small rewrite, but it made it more okay. That she took out her aggressions with the suing on Don because he interrupted or something like that. Yeah. Uh, Maybe. Or, I don't know, just made her more down to earth. If we want her to be like a love relation. Love, yeah. I mean. Because she, she, she comes off as, yeah, the, the, yeah the, the, the crazy stalker bitch character from a yeah. comedy. Once again, this, yeah. the women are written kind of weird, except for Liv Tyler. The women are written kind of mm. like more of like a stereotypical comedy character. Yeah. Um, uh, and I, I, I don't know the guy who made this movie who plays the, uh, the, uh, the accountant person. Who, yeah. Yeah. Um, he hasn't really done, uh, comedies before, but it felt, felt like this, somehow maybe had more comedic elements at one point yeah because of those characters i don't know yeah probably but But i'd say those two characters and their subplots or plots is the biggest weakness that's her the stalker lady and janine those so yeah um and then uh i i i think they I, i think they handle the stalker lady okay towards the end because she she's the one that that kind of recognizes um that that charlie has a broken heart as she says she she sees that she feels how he has felt she has felt the way he feels about yeah. she, she her husband didn't die but you know yeah she yeah um, yeah he was having an affair and it, it, it's it's yeah. it's at least similar um yeah. another thing they could have done is not make her meet dawn uh, or no, Alan. <laughs> uh, meet Alan uh, at Lib Tyler's practice. Because I yeah. think that the big the big thing that I interpret is that he she's still trying to stalk Alan 
but now through Charlie. <laughs> okay. I, he, I, she's I, I still didn't, like. Okay, I didn't see like she's that. Still pushing into like Alan's life. Yeah, but I think she like going through the to the places where Alan is. She's never gone to anywhere where Charlie is without Alan, except in the end where Alan leaves. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. So make them meet each other without Alan, because it still seems like she's stalking Alan. I think that's the way. I, that's the big problem I have. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I gotta say, one other problem I have with the movie is um, more in, uh, not with the character. It's the it's the structure, because the movie mm -hmm. kind of repeats itself. Okay. Um, it starts with them uh, becoming like re reconnecting, becoming friends again, or you know, hanging out again, and then when they're at the club where he plays drums for that band. Um, they kind of they kind of have a, a falling out when he thinks that someone has sent him. Uh, which the first like oh my god he's paranoid but no like someone has sent him as a uh, mm. like a uh, like a counselor or something. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know he, he that's the first time we see him really like explode and become aggressive. And then uh, we have like a, f a few minutes of the movie where it's kind of awkward. And they don't really hang out, and then he turns up and like, oh, I'm sorry. Offers him a million dollars for some reason, which is weird. Um, mm. But then they, they they start hanging out again, and they're like, oh, they're, they're they're he's opening up a little bit more. But then Alan mentions the family again, and he's like, oh, oh, who are you? What are you trying to do? And he gets angry again. And they start fighting in the uh, in the, uh, the practice, the, the practice, the office, and then they kind of break up again. And then they get back together. It, it, it had a couple of moments like that. Um, um, and also um, uh, when he was uh, having his sessions with Liv Tyler. I can see why that was repetitive. Because it was supposed to show that he doesn't want to open up. But it felt like the movie was repeating a little bit. That that, that moment of him like uh, getting angry. I think it happens one more time even after that. I mean, you know, There's the... Uh, the... Um, the hearing or the when they're in oh, court. Right, right, right. And, and technically, I suppose when he tries to, you know, suicide by cop. Uh, yeah, that that that's small thing. Yeah, uh. Uh, yeah. Um, so it was that. It felt like they re they repeated that a little bit, and I can I can see I can see why. But it felt like oh, this again. It's a small problem, but it is a a, a net nitpick, I suppose. I'd say I I disagree with you on that one. What? <laughs> Disagree? Uh, no, I... Yeah, it is repetitive, but that's the point. I mean, that's the point of the movie. Yeah. That there is this this thing with two steps forward, one step back, always with Charlie, because he doesn't want to get healed. He doesn't want to remember, he doesn't want to. While Alan thinks, no, you have to deal with this. And, yeah. and, yeah. and it, that, that's like the... That's sort of the thing. Uh, it, it wouldn't have been as effective or as interesting if it would have been linear and not repetitive. That it was just they talked and then they figured it out. No, uh, yeah, true. I that's mean, true. you need this 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 battle between them. Yeah. Um, and and I think that's that's what making the movie good. So I agree with you on what you're saying, but I I disagree with your opinion of it <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah okay um it's just it's, it's just that the, the the scenes are identical basically and, I, and that's how it is in real life i suppose yeah. but this is a movie so it should have been two different outbursts or something i don't know like uh, i said it's not a big problem it's just something i noticed yeah. um uh, yeah but other than that other than those things the the kind of shallow female characters and the slight repetitiveness, it's a great movie. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it, it's one, I don't mind it in this movie. I mind it in some movies. Uh, depends on. But I think this one is, it's it's really playing on the emotions in this movie. They're really like, yeah. It's a they're little... really drawing the strings uh, in behind the scenes. And usually I mind it. But not in this one. No, I, yeah, and I don't think it was excessive. It's a little ham-fisted, sure. Mm. Um, it's a little heavy, heavy-handed. Um, but it works because I think 
other than the scene where he actually talks about it, the the day of the the plane crash, which is probably the best scene in the movie. Yeah, it is. Um, uh, it doesn't feel that manipulative. It is. It is more towards mm. the end, like the whole. Yeah. Oh my god, the fucking courtroom scenes are terrible. I mean, not terrible yeah. in a bad way, but like, why would they? They just they won. Yeah. Hey, that made me. I, I was screaming at the, <laughs> at the at the TV when I was watching. Like they just want him to snap. Why? Yeah, why are they doing that, this to him? That fucking B J Novak. Oh yeah, fuck him. <laughs> fuck B J Novak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was. Uh, it's just uh, when when yeah. Donald Sutherland, who plays the the judge, tells him to like <laughs> just. Don't Shut pull up. that crap in my courtroom again. It's like, thank you. <laughs> that was so manipulative. Like showing pictures. Yeah, and... I mean, Sulla was great oh. as the judge. Yeah. He was such a great. Just when B.J. Noak is trying to like, but no, <laughs> shut up. Yeah, we we shut your mouth. You shut your mouth. Thank you. <laughs> oh, it was so good. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Um, yeah. and it was it was kind of weird. Like I could see why his in laws, um acted the way they did because they can't understand why why he doesn't want to remember them they they think he's yeah. like emotionally unavailable or cold even mm. but why do they want him like declared insane why are they trying yeah. to make him snap it was so weird it's so, so yeah I... it was so antagonistic it was like unnecessarily antagonistic yeah i think that's we i agree i think they should have gone a more uh comeuppance at yeah. the end yeah uh but, but i think they're in their in their heads in their emotional state they for them uh charlie is the only part left in the world of their daughter that's and true. they they want a relationship with him because yeah because because he's family and he's yeah and in according to them he needs them and they need him yeah and they refuse to agree that he needs to handle this himself. Yeah. They refuse to accept that he needs time. Yeah, it's been four years, but he needs more than four years. Mm -hmm. uh, and as he says in the, in, in the movie, yeah, you got each other. I don't got anyone. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. And also, and I, I was thinking of that um, as the movie was wrapping up, that we... It seems the first time we see them, they're like approaching mm -hmm. him on the street. Like any, oh. feels like any chance they get to talk to him, they like basically like attack him. Basically, like <laughs> oh, uh, and I get the feeling that, that is something that happens often before the yeah. movie starts. So, in a way, it feels like they're like emotionally st like stunting him. Like he can't move past it because they want to constantly talk to him about it. If they mm. would have just left him alone, he could have been fine in a year or two or whatever. Yeah, and I think that's the point in the, yeah. in the end with the, the courtroom scene that they they are so desperate to to have this relationship with him that they're ready to commit him to a to a mental asylum for a year just because they need him to need them, sort of. Yeah, and 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 that's yeah, they are the antagonists of the movie, hundred yeah. percent, and. At the end, they they sort of they learn their lesson, but I don't think they get the the punishment they need. Yeah, <laughs> sort I'm, of. Yeah, but it feels like he in the scene where he explains to them like yeah uh, yeah like what the part when he says you have each other I have no one and I see the dog even I see them I in other people's mm. faces. He kind of explains it to them, and that's when they get kind of uh, uh, their like absolution or whatever. Basically, yeah. like he accepts them for what they've done, but then mm. there is a scene where he, like, in in secret, moves out of his apartment <laughs> to another apartment so they can't find him. It's just oh, this little weird. Yeah. So there's still some like bad blood between them, but yeah. it's also like may maybe once again it's not like a movie where the where everyone's happy in the end. It's more realistic. Like he literally has to like run away from them so he can have time to heal on his own. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, the goddamn courtroom scene it was so uh, <laughs> infuriating to watch. Uh, so um, we we gotta talk a little about the the video game because that's that's a huge part. 
And yeah. I really like that part of the movie. I like that too, because I really yeah. like that game. Yeah. <laughs> and it's so I just I I read about the actual why they you chose that video game. There's actually yeah. a reason. Okay. Uh, I, I had my I had my uh my suspicions yeah, and, why, but yeah, and I wanted to, what's your interpretation? Why that video game? Because in video games in movies are usually just this generic game. Yeah. But in this movie, for once, they actually play a real video game, which is Shadow of the Colossus. Yeah. And they actually, when they talk about it, they actually talk about the mechanics in the game. Even when uh, Charlie's uh, is teaching Alan to play, they actually point out the correct buttons on yeah. the controller. He mentions what, and, what and you that, have to do, and I was like, yes, that's true. <laughs> I've done yeah. that. And, and that, that's unfortunately very rare in games. Uh, no, in movies, yeah. in movies, that they actually treat the game with such respect. Yeah. So. G gotta say, though, their, their, like, video game play acting was terrible, because it was this, oh. like boomers do when they play video games. Yeah. But other <laughs> yeah. than that, it was, yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, in the script, so. Yeah, yeah, Not, yeah. yeah. The, yeah. Um, I, I don't, I remember, I, I had it when I, I watched it a few days ago. I think I watched it this Sunday or whatever. Um, so I don't remember exactly what my thoughts were. I should have written it down. I don't do enough proper research for this um but the, the the game is about someone like going to great lengths to try and bring someone back from the dead basically uh bring someone they love back from the dead mm. and that obviously ties into adam sanders character to charlie like he has lost someone um but it's also uh, uh the the game i'm i might be off uh um but the game, the, the character of Wander, the, the main character of the game, um, is told in the beginning of the game a little uh, facetiously, a little, you know, shrouded in, in like, weird, weird uh, uh, words that he will have to, like, uh, sacrifice himself. And he won't, even if he manages to do this thing to bring back uh, the girl, I don't remember, I don't think he has a name in the game. Anyway. Um, uh, it, it, it will not be to his satisfaction. He's basically doing this in vain. They, mm. they tell him that in the beginning of the game, but he keeps doing it. Um, because he is, he is, um, uh, he, he is so desperate to, um, uh, to bring her back. So he can't see that it's, it's literally, uh, killing him and he's going to have to sacrifice himself to bring her back. And I think, um, as a as a as a player, you realize this because the more you play the game, the more pale and and dirty he becomes. His clothes becomes tattered. Um, he technically becomes stronger because you got to progress in a video game. But the character in the story becomes weaker and weaker. The further into the game, the more colossi you slay. Um, and spoilers for the end of the game. Uh, uh, it doesn't end with him. Uh, r reviving her, it ends with with uh, th this like imprisoned god, which is helping him taking over his body and and basically like yeah, taking taking his life to to bring themselves back to life. The 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 girl wakes up, but you no, know, he can't really enjoy the yeah. fruits of his labor. And I think the way Charlie is in uh, is in denial with how to handle. Uh, his grief is the same way that Wander is in denial with how to handle his grief. And that's part of it. I had a better explanation or a better idea when I when I, when I was watching the movie. But that's about it. They're, yeah, they're both characters I, in denial. I would say, because I had my own interpretation too before I read the, the, the original one. Okay. Uh, and I would say yours is better than both. Both original and mine. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I agree, but I think also you have a, a deeper understanding of the game than than me or the movie maker. Oh, okay. Because well. I you played it through a few times, right? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Qu quite, <laughs> quite, quite a few times. <laughs> yeah. I so and I game. I never played it. So oh, I okay. I watched you play it, but I never yeah. played it myself. Um. Yeah. So my interpretation was a little more surface uh, level that. It's a it's a game about defeating giant things. Yeah, and oh, there's yeah. not that's overcoming much overcoming obstacles. Yeah, overcoming huge obstacles, and in this world, because I I don't know if they actually acknowledge it, but in my world, 
uh, he plays he plays it over and over again. Yeah, it feels I mean, like he, that because it's not a game yeah. that takes a long time to finish, even if you. No, bad. and also, uh, which I, I I learned when I watched uh, that the for when Alan visits the apartment the first time, he's actually playing the final final one. Mm, no, he's he's, he's oh. defeating the first one. Is it the first one? Oh, okay, yeah. okay, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so I was wrong about that one. I I I heard it was the final one. Yeah. Anyway, he he mentions that he's on the eleventh colossi, but when you see oh. it's it's the first one. Oh, okay. It's, I, I it's thought that, that was oh. just once again them not being like, oh, whatever. We just take some video game mm. footage. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I I was just thinking that he he's trying to he can't overcome this huge emotional uh, obstacles in his real life, so he uses the video game to do it instead. Yeah, yeah. That's that's the way that, uh, I was thinking. That's gamer logic 101. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, the original, the the actual reason why they shows it. Okay. Because apparently, uh, I'm reading, reading from the internet here. <laughs> so, uh, early in the scripts, had Sander playing a simple 1980s style game. Them. Just one of those generic movie games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then the uh, da, 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 and then Jeremy Rowach, uh, editor, recalled that his own father watched the movie Aliens in 1986, obviously as a thinly veiled kind of Vietnam veteran kind of story. Oh, sure. Uh, seeing the image imagery of the colossi falling, he realized someone who who was dealing with. 9-11 would be engrossed by a giant that keeps collapsing over and over again. Ooh, yeah, I was... When you when you said my interpretation was different from theirs, I thought, is that it? Like a bunch of no. giants falling? That's yeah. that's kind of tasteless, but okay. <laughs> yeah, it's the, the, the huge buildings falling, the giant, the colossi fallen, yeah. falling, so yeah, that's, that's the reason. Okay. And I think you win this round of yeah. why is this in the movie? <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, that was a pretty bad one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> both, but, both ours were better. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's... So, maybe they didn't put that much respect in it, but it's it leaves a lot to interpretation, so that's yeah, a good thing. That, yeah, that's a good thing. That's the, the, yeah. uh, the hallmark of, of great art, is when you can interpret yeah. it. So, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and let's talk... Let's talk about, um, this was more of a problem when I saw it the first time, because this was when I mm -hmm. stopped liking Adam Sandler. Mm -hmm. I thought he was, not that he was miscast, I, didn't, I don't think it was, it feels like a role that was written for him, but that his no. acting, his acting chops wasn't really up to snuff to portray this character. That's what I thought back then in 2000, whatever, eight, nine. Um, mm. Watching it now, I still felt sometimes that his acting didn't really fit, but for the most part, I thought he made a, he did a phenomenal job. It's another one where he he really does a good job if he just has the right material and the right people. Yeah, but uh, what what specific instances didn't didn't he fit? Do you remember any? Yeah, first of all, he <laughs> he kind of does. Uh, I, I don't want to. I wouldn't be respectful when saying that because, like I said, I like him in this movie. But he mm. kind of does the Adam Sandler voice a little bit in the beginning, like when he talks. It's almost like yeah. when he's playing a mentally deficient character a little bit. It sounds like he's like slurring his words, and I, I get that, that that's the point. But I'm so, especially now that I've watched so many Adam Sandler movies in such a short amount of time. It just it reminded me of like Waterboy when he spoke. Yeah, it was weird. Yeah, I I I agree. I had the same feelings when I watched it, but yeah. I quickly uh, wrote it off as yeah, that's because I've seen so many of his movies. Yeah, and that's uh, why that, it was not. A... I don't think it's a problem with the movie. It's a problem with me at that point. Yeah, yeah, Sorry. yeah, exactly. And that's it was it was less of a problem this time. It was worse the first time I saw it. So, but mm. I was still a little like, Ugh, but. Then you keep watching the movie and say, no, no, he's actually really good in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, but we, we we mentioned that, that Punch Drunk Love is still a better movie, but do you think this is yes. its best portrayal so far? Um, of the movies we've seen? What do you mean? 
what do you mean exactly when you say portrayal? Um, uh, his his handling of the material, his just acting in general. Uh, mm, it's it, it's a hard question because he is a better actor in Punch Drunk Love. But also, it's material written for him in every way. Yeah, and it's and more... it's it's not a character that was handed to him and he made the best of it. It's he didn't have to do that much. It's just it's more of a, a character written perfectly for his way of acting. Mm. Hence, it is better acting because yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a hard question, but. If you take away all those things, I'd say he's a he's a better actor than this one. I'd say. I think so too. I I think he has, he has matured as an actor yeah. over these years since Punch Drunk Love. Yeah. Like if Punch Drunk Love was made in when this whenever this was made two thousand seven or whatever. Mm. Yeah. Do you think Punch Drunk Love would have been better? Because he had had more time <sighs> acting. No, but then he wouldn't have made Punch Drunk Love, so maybe not. But he had made Spanish. No, so I don't know. It, it also Punch Drunk Love lives a lot on the on the the rough the roughness that he had at that point. That's true. Uh, I I don't think he at at two thousand seven. I don't think he had the, had it in him to be that over the top and that raw in his performance. No, he's more true. safe now. He's more safe and he's more more caring about the the paycheck and stuff like that it's That's not true. and in and he has a reputation at least in ho in in hollywood that he can't really that really has to take care of mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah so so i don't think he he would yeah i don't think Pusher would have been better uh at 2007 huh. ah, I, 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 th I think i agree i mean it's 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 i think it's i think Rain Over Me is a is an easier movie for for regular people to digest mm, um, because yeah, it definitely. is more relatable and it's more of a, a a regular story. Punch Drunk Love is so it's almost like a fantasy at points and it's so strange. Yeah. He the way he acts is strange. Everything is strange about that movie. Yeah, it's so it's a very artistic movie. Yes, yeah, so I think that's that's why um, uh, this, this if if he feels like. He's acting better in this one, but I, yeah, I'm, I'm not yeah. sure myself now that I think about it. Like, no, no. Yeah. I do like weird stuff, so punch strong <laughs> love. <laughs> but then also uh, Spanglish. But I don't think yeah. he, he is not better in Spanglish than he is in this. But I, I no. think I enjoyed Spanglish more than this. It might be because yeah. I had never seen it before, mm. and it was such a, it was such a revelation, and like made me. Uh, like uh, reinvigorated my 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 love for <laughs> movies when I saw that movie. It was just what the <laughs> hell is this when I saw that? So that might and then be then we saw Longest Yard and uh, everything. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. So uh, just looking at the list then, because I, I don't know, do you have anything more to add on this movie? Uh, I no. think it's kind of done. Yeah, we we kind of done. Yeah. Um, ah. should we do uh uh the the scoring and uh. Well, there's there's no Adam Sandler characters no. in this one, right? None of them. None of them. No. We don't even have to. Yeah. So so <laughs> no one on that one. Yeah. Uh, no no other regulars. Uh, yeah, the scoring. The scoring. Uh, see if I can it's, it's bring it up. Boop. There that's, it is. That's right. a hard one, I'd say. Yeah, it is. So um, uh, well, I don't have. I have from. I don't know. <laughs> Do you want to go first? <laughs> I'm gonna say, hmm, uh, hmm, maybe a uh, seventy-eight, maybe. Okay, seventy-eight. I think. Yeah, I think seventy-eight. Seven That's what I'm feeling. Yeah. Um, and I would say, because that makes sense, because you said you liked this more than Spanglish, because you yeah. gave that a seven. Yeah, right. And I think I'm on uh. the I'm I'm the other way around. I really like this one, mm. but I think I like Spanglish more. Um, and I gave Spanglish an eighty, so I could give this a seventy-two. But I think I'll go. <laughs> uh, 
like just slightly lower. I'll, I'll give it a. I'll give it a. But not. I mean, I'm. I'm. It's up there. I'll give it a seventy-five out of a hundred. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it's a good, respectable. Yes, very respectable. It's a. It's. A, it is a really good movie. It just. Mm. It has a few flaws. Very few. Very small flaws. But they're there. So it's not. It's not yeah. quite as good as Spanglish. And not oh. as good as uh, Punch Drunk Love, but it's still. But if we, if, just if we, if we any like any day in the week, just a regular day. Yeah. Would you put on Spanglish or Rain Over Me? Uh, Spanglish, because. Oh, well, you would. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh, not not because it's well. Well, yeah. I, I thought that was better, but not because of that, because this. Um. Uh. I. It's it's em, it's emotionally taxing. Like, oh yeah, I yeah. was I was crying like a fucking child when he when he started yeah. crying. It was like, oh yeah. god! And then the courtroom scene, I was just I got so worked up. <laughs> I felt all of the emotions in this movie, and I don't know if I want like, oh, it's a Wednesday afternoon, I'm gonna cry now. I'm gonna no. feel all emotions. Yes, I'm gonna be angry, happy, sad. No, I I'd rather watch okay. Spanglish, which was a, a very like also very like emotional movie, but in a different yeah. way. No. Um but so, I would I would just... definitely recommend this one. It's uh, mm. it feels like a little bit of a hidden gem. People don't talk about Rain Over Me that much. Yeah, but I would say Spanglish is more hidden. Oh sure, yeah, 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 sure, sure, sure. But so, I mean, so uh, yeah. I, I, I can't remember anyone speaking of either Spanglish or this. Like nobody mentions yeah. those movies. I don't know. No. Um what did we give Punch Drunk Love? Uh... I think we bring it up. Every time he has a, a, a good movie, but let me see, because uh, I had it here somewhere. Oops, we 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 disappeared from the screen. Let's see here, leaderboard one. Let's see if I can bring that up on 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 the screen. Uh, mm, 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 boop. There. Oh, it's a little. Uh, we gave it. Um, oh, you can't see it right now. We gave it. Uh, you gave it an 82, and I gave it an 80. Oh, so I gave it the same as... Uh, oh. As... Uh, right. What's it called? Spanglish. Spanglish. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah, it's 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 marginally better, but it, it is better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so... Looking at the list, then. Um, yeah. So... What's up next? <laughs> <sighs> so, uh, the, the, the last episode... Was a uh, click, and I now pronounce the shock and Larry. Yeah, uh, click came out in 2006. It's the only movie he made 2006. Uh, okay, yeah. And in 2007, he made I now pronounce shock and Larry and Rain Over Me. Those are two movies he made the same year, and it's interesting. Very interesting. Uh, movies, yeah, yeah. So, uh, next up, uh, next week we have uh, it's a single, as we said in the last episode. Uh, yeah, I can say that again. Um, from now on, we're mostly going to watch one movie per episode. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, up until uh, the Netflix movies. Then we're going to start bunching them together. But uh, yeah. until then, it's, it's one episode per... One movie per episode. So next time, it's Bedtime Stories uh, from 2008. Yeah, I think that's his I... only... Disney movie, I think. Okay, I have never seen it. I have never heard of it. I know nothing about it. I've heard about it. I remember I s seeing the trailer when it, when it was new. I mm. was like, "Yeah, I'm not gonna watch this." So I, I've never, yeah, I've yeah. never seen it. <laughs> yeah, I, I I never even seen a poster of it. So I I, oh, okay. I am going in completely blank on this one. Uh, and then after that, the episode after that, yeah, uh, it's a movie he made the same year. Yeah, the same uh, year as Bedtime Stories, yeah. and that's You Don't Mess With the Sohan. <sighs> yeah, okay. I've heard Which people, I know... I, I've heard people defend that. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people defend but I'm that like, one. Are you, are you nuts? Because I've seen parts of it, and it's looks yeah. fucking terrible. But I saw I the trailer, and I think I saw some clip of it, and I... Because I, it was the same time. Mm. I, I have always thought this was Adam Sandler's version of Borat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That he saw Borat, and I was, yeah, I'm gonna make the same thing, and completely missed the point. Yeah. Uh, 
That's I don't know. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, yeah. Not excited for that one either. Uh, yeah. So that's the two upcoming weeks. Yeah. So so next week, uh, bedtime stories. If anyone yeah. if anyone wants to follow along, mm -hmm. uh, be sure to check out bedtime stories. Uh, before we're gonna do this was uh, this this is now streaming on a Wednesday, but we're we like we usually do we do it on Tuesdays. Just have some. Mm. Uh, I was preoccupied yesterday. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna do it Tuesdays. If not, I'm gonna mention that somewhere online before that Twitter or yeah, I go live and explain why. But Tuesday, next Tuesday, we're watching or we will discuss bedtime stories. Yes. So uh, watch it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Follow along. You're really selling this. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah watch I, it. I, yeah, but I don't like. Cause I haven't I haven't seen it, so maybe it's good. Who knows? Well, but yeah, I, I don't want to tell people to hey, watch this Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> yeah. But if you want to follow along in the discussion, you know, it's it's easier if you've seen the movie. Anyway, yeah. um, that's gonna be it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. We once again we managed to do an hour without without a uh, without a uh, uh, stalling for too for too long. Yeah. When will you stop worrying about this? I, I have made this schedule, so it's not going to happen. I know. <laughs> I know. I don't know why. I know which movie is going to take time and which isn't. Oh, okay, that's that's true. That's true. Well, except that time, one time we made three movies and it took one and a half an hour. Oh, one yeah. and a half hour. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I misjudged we, that one. Yeah, we, and we even tried. I remember, like, I, we were, I was, like, cutting cutting myself and you off like okay that's enough let's talk about the next one but it's still yeah. too long yeah that was that was horrible there i hadn't <laughs> i hadn't uh taken account the complaining yeah uh, which that was little nicky uh big daddy, big daddy and... and mr deeds oh right god uh... the, the horrible horrible episode yeah <laughs> That's the worst one so far, I think. Imagine if if that was the one without sound, oh, and we had to remake that then, one. Then it would never happen. It would no. I can say right now, it would never happen. <laughs> no. This one, Click and Chuck and Larry, it might still happen. Might. If, Maybe. If the fans demand it. Yes. Yes. I'm gonna put up a. I'm gonna put up a, a, a donation goal or something. Like if yeah. we reach this yeah. much money, we will torture ourselves again. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. But anyway. Um. So thank you. Uh, thank you for watching. Yes. Uh, there, there are some people in here watching. So thank you for hanging out, and uh, we'll see you in another episode uh, of the Adam Sandler podcast next Tuesday. But you can always you know, check out the YouTube channel. There's links everywhere, uh, and also if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, check us out live on Twitch Tuesdays eight o'clock Swedish time, whatever time that is where you live, um, time zones and all that. Um, so, and that's also going to be the, like I said in the beginning, that's the, that's a norm now L when it's live stuff, it's on Twitch and then it'll be archived on YouTube because YouTube can fuck off with the live stuff. But anyway, thank you for hanging out. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye everyone. Bye.